Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited, and today uh, I'm on a site where uh, we have a EICR failure. Uh, so I thought I'd uh, whip out the old video camera and we'll have a quick chat about why this site fails because uh, we, we come across obviously a fair few EICR failures in our inspections, but uh, this one's interesting because uh, one of the big problems here is maximum demand, which is perhaps something that not everyone thinks about uh, with their electrical installation. Certainly, the installer of this stuff hasn't put uh, any thought into maximum demand and uh, that's going to cause a headache for the homeowner going forward today and we'll have a look at why that is. Let's just start with a quick pan around with the camera to show the salubrious surroundings I'm in. It's a very glamorous position uh, being an electrician. You get to be in all sorts of fun places like this cobweb filled under stairs cupboard that I'm currently cramped up in but uh, there's all our uh, electrical gear there. I've got the TIS that I'll be playing with later and uh, well we've got a few games to keep me entertained if I get bored uh, but uh, it's uh, a cramped little space. Uh, oh hello. Hmm. A man after my own heart, I like that. Jolly good. Okay, um, but like I say, let's have a, a closer look at what's going on here and, uh, and why I have some concerns with today's EICR. First of all, a quick chat about this property and the circumstances here. Now, um, I think this is a 1930s-ish house looking at it. Uh, it's been heavily extended. Um, the current homeowners have only been in for six weeks uh, and it's a shame that they didn't get an EICR performed before they bought it because there's quite a lot wrong here that's it's going to need to be sorted out. It's going to cost a few quid uh, and that's something that they could perhaps have negotiated off the purchase price uh, had they been made aware that there were there was some problems here. Um, the, uh, the the layout of the house is a six bedroom house. Uh, we're in Stratford upon Avon, so you can imagine it's going to be pretty pricey. Um, the uh, so again, it's a shame that this wasn't taken into account before. But uh, what we've got is the we've got the original core of the house uh, with its uh, its old colour wiring. We've then had an extension put onto that, uh, which gives us uh, effectively an extra lounge or dining room, a big kitchen, um, and a, a study at the back. Uh, where the garage used to be uh, is now a self-contained living area in its own right. It's got a kitchen, two bedrooms, each with an ensuite, um, and, and a lounge area. So that that in itself is it's all it's all joined. There's no separation between them. But so we, what we kind of have really is two two living areas, two two houses almost as part of one. Uh, I believe the the lady's parents are going to be moving in with them, so they've got their own sort of space uh, separate from the uh, the. Uh, the family and the rest of the house. Now when that uh, garage was converted into its living area uh, the installer didn't take into account maximum demand uh, which is what makes this, uh, this installation fairly interesting to look at because obviously when we do EICRs we, we do see a lot of failures for various reasons but maximum demand generally isn't always one of them um, but it, it definitely is here. Um, so uh, because of this interesting uh, extended layout we have um, three electric showers on site, um, we have uh, two electric cookers uh, and we have a lot of socket and lighting circuits. Now um, the board here I suspect perhaps dates to around 2005 uh, I would say, well, mid 2000s, I should say, because the wiring colours that go off to serve the new um, extension, the garage, the way the garage has been converted, that's uh, that's all in new colours, post 2005 colours. So I reckon that this board was probably put in at the same time as that extension was 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 put on, um, and then all the wiring was brought in to, to the breakers on this side here. So the the installer has put in an RCD, and then eight breakers hanging off it. Um, so we've got a mixture of old and new colours here, but uh, we, this is obviously, it looks like a 16th edition sort of split load. We've got a bunch of non-RCD protected circuits here, and then we've got the eight RCD protected circuits here, but we've got new cable colours on both of them. So if it were around sort of 2005 to 2007, then that, that would date it to 16th edition, and that, that probably fits in with what we're looking at here. Um, the... Uh, issue with maximum demand comes from the fact that, like I say, we've got three electric showers here. Now this, this service head is um, 
it's not labelled, so let's assume it's 100 amps. It may be lower, it may be 80, 60. Uh, often, if it's not labelled, from my experience, that seems to mean it's it's probably 100, but we can't be sure. But even if it's 100, um, three electric showers hanging off a 100 amp fuse, that's not good, is it? Uh, these are sort of eight, 8 .5 to 9 kilowatt showers, so they're, they're going to be pretty heavily loaded. Each one has a 40 amp breaker, so we've got three 40 amp breakers hanging off this RCD, and then we've got five 32 amp ring circuits also hanging off it. Now, although the 32 amp ring circuits aren't going to be pulling 32 amps, uh, generally speaking, I would hope, uh, two of them are serving kitchens, so we're talking kettles, toasters, um, things that heat up and take a bit of power, but all of this is hanging off a 63 amp RCD, uh, and it's been cooked, of course, because it only takes two of these electric showers to be on at any one time, and you, you're probably pulling sort of 70, 80 amps through a 63 amp RCD, and uh, that means that it's busted, <laughs> it's proper fried inside there. The, the test button doesn't work and the, the physical action of moving the switch is uh, its incredibly stiff, incredibly tricky. So we've, we've lost our uh, additional protection here because the uh, because of the, the installer who put all this in and hung all these circuits off here just didn't think about what this was capable of actually handling. And it was a crappy arrangement anyway to hang all of this stuff off one RCD. A fault on any one of these socket circuits means that they lose all their socket circuits in the house. Um, so that's a bit of a pain in the hat. Um, we can also see that the uh, service head itself has suffered from a bit of overheating over time because the, uh, the pitch insulation inside has melted out of the thing. Um, it's, it's not a great connection either on the uh, on the sheathing there to, to provide the air. So I think our best bet there is probably to get Western Power in to replace that with a modern TNCS 100 amp head um, to sort of resolve those issues. We're also going to have to get an isolator installed so that uh, we can change the board because I think a board change is going to have to happen. Whether we get awarded the work or not, I don't know. Someone else might have to do it. Um, can't say I'd be particularly looking forward to it because it's a bit of a pain, but uh, I think the best bet with this is to uh, split it off into a load of separate RCBOs so that we haven't got this heavy loading on one piece of equipment uh, in here. Uh, and you know, if, if you're in a million pound plus house, then it makes sense to spend a bit on the infrastructure of the thing, doesn't it? So it's all might. Uh, might wrinkle their nose up at the cost of having to replace all this, but once it's done and done properly, it's, it's going to be done for a, a good long time. Now, it's interesting to point out as well that the, the previous electrician, if indeed he was much of, of one, um, he hasn't labelled the board. We've got next to no labelling on here. Only a couple of things are labelled. Lighting, lighting, cooker, shower. And what does that say? Downstairs sockets. Do we find that was downstairs sockets? Nigel and I have actually had to go through and trace uh, a lot of these things. Um, uh, and yeah, that, that one that's downstairs sockets, well, it's, it serves part of the downstairs area, so it's not even covering all of it. Now, um, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand how someone can put in a board, wire up the existing circuits that are on site, put in a load of new ones, and then not even go to the trouble of labelling what's what, not even writing on it in pencil or anything, it's just, just nuts, isn't it? Um, so Nigel and I actually came here to do this EICR uh, earlier in the week, and because there were so many circuits here, and there's another board in the shed as well that uh, contains sockets and lighting circuits, um, we, we, just, we just didn't get finished in the day, so I've had to come back today to finish off, so I've got to now label all this up and uh, finish off the remaining testing and inspecting that we didn't get done the other day. Which is interesting, uh, people say to me, how much do you charge for EICRs? We charge per circuit, we used to charge per bedroom, so a three bedroom house would be say 150 quid fixed price. Um, but then you turn up and you'd find the odd installation where, uh, I think we went to when it had like 14 circuits in it or something like that. Oh, crikey, well we're not going to make our money today, are we? So now we charge per circuit, which in my opinion is fair because you're, if you have an installation with um, more circuits, it's going to take more time and therefore you want the, the cost on site to reflect that. You can, um, you can charge per hour of course, but people want to have some idea of what they're going to be paying. So if you don't know how long it's going to take, it's quite hard to to cost up 
uh, if you're charging per circuit you can at least say to them well count how many breakers you've got or how many fuses you've got and that will give you a kind of idea as to what it's going to charge some may be spare of course and some may be uh, may have more than one circuit but i'm going to pull the cover off this board it's still on so uh, don't tell anybody I'm being very naughty um, but just to show you that in here uh, circuit number one has two lighting circuits hanging off it and circuit number three has four so if we all four of those have got to be individually tested and inspected so that's four circuits being charged for on that one breaker um, so you know again it, it adds up uh, how long does it take uh, we normally allow a day for domestic ERCRs uh, in many cases it doesn't take all day uh, if the place is easy to get around and it's small enough um, but uh, you know there's always something else on our to-do list if we if we get finished early we can just take a look at the uh, the job blog and say right okay well a couple of phone calls we'll find someone who uh, we have a, often have a, a standby job in reserve for that day something that we can potentially go to um, that, that can take up the, the remaining hours of the day uh, so we're not sitting around idly uh, in this case um, we've already been here for one day uh, and because of the size of the installation and the complexity and the fact it's been monkeyed with over the years it's grown organically and there's bits going off here and there and there are faults uh, we've uh, it's taken a bit longer than than ordinarily it perhaps would um, and i've had to come back today to, to carry on but it's obviously with the number of circuits here it's going to cost a few quid but what we want to do at the end of the day is to provide an honest report something that's got our name on it that says here's as much as we or, or indeed anybody else could have found uh, on the installation here's the problems they don't have to use this for remedials they can take that report and give it to anybody else who should be able to look at it interpret it agree with it because we've got nothing to hide here and, and carry out whatever remedial works are required um, so like i say it's just just an honest report and the the charge should reflect the the time that we put in hopefully um, this is interesting, we've got a, um, a 32 amp RCBO here, so this is obviously something that's been added uh, after the fact um, sometime in the more recent years, uh, or certainly since this board originally went in. Um, it's in a different style as well, this Proteus breaker to the rest of them, but uh, the armoured cable here, uh, it hasn't been terminated properly, the sheathing isn't earthed in there, it's just been, just been chopped off and the cable's loose. Um, it's, I believe the sheathing's earth at the other end, but it's not earth here. Again, it's just a crappy installation. And it's interesting because uh, they've used brown for neutral and grey for earth on the uh, armoured core here, uh, on the armoured cable. Uh, and at the other end, it's the other way around. We've got um, black for earth and grey for neutral, but it's not a reversal. Now, we've tested that out. So there must be some intermediate point somewhere where the two armoured cables meet and have their colours crossed over. Where that is, I don't know, we haven't found that yet. But uh, that's one of those things that, you know, it, it looks like it should be quite a straightforward circuit to test and inspect, and then you find a little jolly like that thrown in just to, um, just to confuse you and, uh, and ruin your day. Um, so yes, yeah, so interesting this one, uh, like there's, there's a few other faults as well that uh, I've got recorded on the laptop there. We've got a couple of socket circuits with crap uh, IR readings. Uh, we've got uh, one of these rings has no continuity end to end on any of its cores, so uh, that's no good on a 30 turn breaker there, and goodness knows where the brake is. Uh, and again, it's, it's one of those where, it, because it's an existing installation, uh, because it's rather smartly done as some places being renovated but there's other places that are don't need renovation uh, so it's very hard to start knocking holes and things to find where some of these faults are and that's the pain with this sort of thing it's trying to figure out what joe blogs electrical did 10 years ago and uh, how he managed to cock it up and or, or mr diy or whatever and, and figure out what they've done and uh, how on earth we're going to get around sorting it out but um, because of the um, the issue of maximum demand here uh, we're going to have to sort of say to the homeowner as well, look, you've got this problem where three electric showers uh, plus the rest of your loading all hanging off what may not even be a 100 amp fuse. It just isn't great. There are solutions around that. We can put in a shower sharing device, which um, will allow you to um, say, if you've got one electric shower in use, it will prevent another one from being used got one of those myself which I use on my electric shower and my electric car charge point because I've only got a 60 amp fuse in my head people keep asking me about that I must do a video on uh, on how that works it's a good bit of kit that so we can put in something like that potentially to try and uh, bring the maximum demand uh, down 
Um, but uh, we, there's also other things we've got to do here. We've got 10 amp circuits for the lighting. Uh, it's all one mil cable, um, so that no derating factors have been applied. Uh, there's not a lot of like halogen down lights and things like that, so I don't know why they're rated at, at 10 amps. Um, because I doubt any of these circuits are pulling anywhere near that kind of loading and these days of course you can retrofit LED everywhere and, and really bring that loading down so those 10s would have to be changed to 6s the RCD has got to be replaced the duff ring has got to be changed out for a couple of 20 amp radials potentially or 16 amp radials the showers have got to be split out in some kind of way to make sure that they don't cause the demand issue uh, and by the time you start getting into replacing all these sort of devices, you're best off just looking at it and going, tell you what, we'll just stick in a new board that's purpose built that can accommodate all the circuits so we're not violating regulation 314 and having loads of circuits crammed into one breaker. Um, and we'll just put in something that's actually fit for purpose, uh, probably RCBO based. Um, and, you know, as I say, spend a few quid now and, and it's, it, it's, it's good going forward. Now we know that the RCD here is knackered, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see uh, we, everything's switched on at the moment. So I'm going to see under normal operation what kind of leakage current we're getting. I'm, I'm going to use this clamp accessory that I uh, have for my TIS MFT Pro, which does uh, leakage. So we're going to put that huge bad boy on there, which uh, just fits on. If I scroll down, I don't know where you can see the screen on this thing, but uh, can you see that at all? It's hard to tell from the viewfinder. I'm going to just go to leakage current. And we can see we've got uh, best part of an amp leakage current there. We know that the, in fact it's just hit one amp, the, um, the insulation resistance is, uh, is knackered on a couple of these circuits. So uh, no surprise there. Um, I've also got with me my uh, my little earth leakage meter here, so let's see if that, if that concurs. Put that on and switch it to the 2 amp range. Okay. Excuse me a minute, I'm going to take the, the camera off the tripod so you can see this. Uh, where is it? And yes, that's, uh, that's agreeing with it, we're getting uh, between um, 0 0.8 to 1 amp thereabouts leakage current down this earth wire and of course the, uh, the RCD uh, the, the, these circuits uh, are tested out okay for IR but um, a couple of these like I say are, are knackered but the RCD is doing nothing about it um, and it would be a right pain in the arse if it did trip to be fair because all of the socket circuits are hanging off here so uh, like I say this really needs to be split out to RCBOs I've used my brother labelling printer here that uh, we looked at in a previous video to knock up some basic labels for the the, the various fuseways so that the uh, homeowner can at least relate uh, each breaker to a particular function or um, location. Um, obviously it's, it is just basic labelling here but it, it's a moot point anyway because the whole bally lots will be coming out in due course I'm sure. And of course they've got my schedule of test results to uh, to relate to as well and uh, the whole report will be coming with a, a covering letter explaining in plain English just what I found. Uh, and what needs attention so uh, they can uh, hopefully book me or somebody suitable to, uh, to come and uncock this cock up and there you have it really not the most exciting video in the world i'm afraid but i thought it was interesting to take a look at uh, how maximum demand had uh, played a part in the failure of this installation because the uh, installer a few years ago just hadn't taken it into account when he was happily slapping electric showers all over the place uh, on a 63 amp RCD and a 100 amp uh, at the most uh, service head um, and that obviously has had a knock on effect down the line goodness knows how long that RCD has been burnt out for but uh, probably for a very long time so they, uh, the previous owners have been living without their additional protection the uh, service head has, uh, has taken some heat damage uh, that's, could, again that's probably years old but obviously it all needs sorting out now and now I've got to go off and give the bad news to the new homeowners that the, the dream home they've just purchased for goodness knows how much money uh, needs uh, quite a lot of remedial work in order to actually make it uh, safe to live in.